Hello. All right. This is awesome. Thank you for staying. I'm calling you the survivors. Okay? You've made it through. This is the last keynote. There's still more, but this is the last time somebody's going to stand here like this, talking to you, trying to make you happy. All right. So I want to talk to you today about something that I think is a bit different than what everybody else has been talking about for the past couple of days, right? We've heard about future, we've heard about money, we've heard about product, lots of stuff, right? Really cool, really interesting, right? Exciting, inspiring. But I want to talk to you about something that I think will make or break your startup or your company if you're not in a startup, okay? I think it's super, super, super serious, okay? So you don't believe me, so I'm going to prove it to you otherwise. This guy, you might not like his politics, you might not know who he is, doesn't matter, okay? He invest, invested $150 million into Airbnb. It's a lot of money, right? Who wants $150 million? Me. Okay? So he invests the $150 million. The guys from Airbnb invite him into the first board meeting, and the first question they ask him is, what's the one piece of advice you would give us? The one piece of advice. Ready? Don't fuck up the culture. Quote. Right? I mean, that's, that's serious, right? 150 million, don't fuck up the culture. Okay? So now you believe me. It's serious. It makes a huge difference. And so I'm going to tell you about it. This is the Airbnb uh, list of values, right? Every company has them. Most are shit. Most are not really thoughtful. Most people couldn't tell you what they are, okay? But Airbnb from day one invested in this. Seriously, spent a lot of time thinking about what do we want to share with the public? What do we want our employees to feel? What are we all about, right? And when you look at that, you can tell right away that it's different, right? It's not your standard company list of values, okay? And it's very, very important to think about those things. The free lunch. Right? Everybody thinks startups must give a free lunch. It's not a free lunch. That's complete and utter bullshit. Okay? It's not free at all, especially for you if you're getting them. This is Twitter. Okay? This is their cafeteria. They have nice food. It's probably really good. I've never worked there, never been there. This is Facebook. It's another cafeteria okay? with free food. Do you know what the difference between the Twitter cafeteria and the Facebook cafeteria is? Anyone? Looks different. The Twitter cafeteria serves lunch. The Facebook cafeteria serves lunch and dinner. That's a huge difference. And do you know why? Because when you serve dinner, guess what? Everybody stays for the free dinner. But really, they're working more. They're working longer, okay? I spent seven years at Google. There was free dinner, right? You know what Google did? They said, hey, you know what? Not only are we gonna give you free dinner, but you can bring your family too, right? Not to be cool to the family. Well, it was, right? They, they liked it. It was good food. but. Because then the family could come, spend time with you, have a nice dinner, and as soon as that was over, the family could leave and you could keep working. <laughs> right? It's about productivity. It's about performance. It's about not letting people go out to lunch on their own or with someone from outside the company. Right? Let's keep everyone together talking about work all day long and as late into the evening as possible. Right? This is a strategy. Okay? And it works. Believe me, it works, okay? But to me, that's not culture, right? Ping pong tables, pool tables, video games, it's not culture. Culture is what you feel inside the company, what types of behaviors people elicit, and what you want them to do. This is culture to me. This is a photo of inside Facebook from when Google launched Google+, Plus. okay? So obviously, Google launches Google+, Facebook sees it as a full frontal attack, and this is what happens. If you don't read Latin, or you don't know the expression, it's Carthage must, must be destroyed, 
okay? Don't be googly. It's pretty hardcore, right? That's what you see. And then what Facebook has is this thing during any type of crisis or intense moments called lockdown. What's lockdown? Nobody leaves, <laughs> okay? Forget about the free food, you just don't leave, right? But that's part of the culture, right? Like, we will not be attacked, okay? We will fight back with everything we've got. And that's really what makes a culture, okay? But instead of just talking about these broad aspects of culture, I wanted to get really practical with you guys, okay? I want you to walk out of here with something that you can actually do. Because culture, we'd have to talk for hours and hours and hours and hours, okay? Which we can do another time. But I want to talk to you about recruiting, which most startups say is their number one problem. And after that, I want to talk to you about retention, which is keeping your people, okay? So let's talk about recruiting. Take a look at this quote from Laszlo Bach, who just until recently used to be the head of all HR for, for Google. Look at the amount of time that they spent on recruiting, right? What is it, four, yeah, four to 10 hours per week for most employees? one day a week for the executives, until they were 20,000 people? I left Google in 2009. That's when Google hit 20,000 employees. Can you imagine that? How many of you spend four to 10 hours a week on recruiting? Anyone? Are you a recruiter? No? Okay, good. Not many, I saw one hand, maybe two. There's another one, right? Four to 10 hours, or one day a week as an executive, right? CEO, VP, CFO, whoever. Right? But that's the kind of investment you need to make if you're really serious about it. Everybody says, oh, people are so important. We have to hire the best people. We only want A players. But do you think that just happens? Do you think people just walk in your door? It doesn't happen that way. You have to invest a massive amount of energy. Second thing about recruiting, and I think this is a big, big issue with startups. It's about the type of people that you bring in. Right? So I obviously do a lot of recruiting. And I would say 95% of startups say, we need exactly this. The person who's done this before in a startup just like ours. Okay? Do you know how hard that is to deliver? Let's talk about a place like Sophia. Do you know how hard it is to hire a product manager who's done it before in a startup just like yours? My guess is it's impossible, right? But all startups want that, but at the end of the day, it's, does the person have the right character? Does the person fit the culture that you've defined to deliver what you need? And I think people need to really, really open their eyes about the type of people they're bringing in because there's a lot of people with great potential out there and you need to figure out how to make them fit in your company and they're not necessarily gonna have that perfect amount of experience. Here's the last, the last bit of the quote. So this guy is a senior VP at Google, again. And I think this is phenomenal. You've heard people talk about a 10x engineer is going to be so important for you, right? The, uh, I forget the guy's name. I think it's Joel Spolsky uh, who came up with that. So, but this guy is saying that he would rather forego 300 people to get the best one. If you think about that, that's hugely powerful, right? That it's so important to hire the best possible person that I'll forget about the 300 others, right? And, and keeping that focus and understanding what good that can do for your company and how far that can take you. So, practical stuff. The elevator pitch. Everybody who's doing a startup has the elevator pitch for the investors. Some are good, some are okay, some are great, some suck. Most people don't have an elevator pitch for candidates, right? And candidates, no matter what the position, but especially what most people are looking for and find hard to find being developers, are bombarded on a daily basis by recruiters, by startups, saying, hey, why don't you look at this company, look at this company, look at this company. They hate it. Right? They hate it. Most of them just hit delete, 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 right? One of the reasons for that is because nobody's telling a good story, right? You have a startup, you believed in it, you've, you're working your ass off without free lunch or free dinner, right? 
but you don't have the good story to tell it. You have to build a great story. You have to hook someone into your startup within the first 10, 15 seconds of them reading or hearing your message. And you need to think about that. You need to build that stuff in order to attract people. Okay, always be recruiting. Okay, that's the other thing. Everybody thinks about recruiting too late, right? You raise the money and, oh shit, we have to hire people. Maybe we should think about it before we raise the money, right? And start doing that networking that's required, okay? And people don't think about this, but I, I think this is a good lesson for everything, regardless of, of recruiting. But networking is about getting what you want in a sense, right? It's about asking for what you want. It's about telling people what you're doing, okay? And, it's, and, and you should all try this, especially tonight at the party. Go and talk to someone and tell them about what you're doing and ask them if they know anyone or know something that can help you. And if you do that over and over and over and over again, you will get whatever you want, okay? And so I do that all day. It's my job, right? But I'll give you the, a beautiful example of this. Yesterday, right, talking with someone here, they're saying, oh, I'm working with this company and we're trying to hire this VP of customer success. You know, do you know anybody? Nope, I don't know anybody. But magically, overnight, somebody on LinkedIn connects to me and they're a VP of customer success. So who do I think of immediately? The person who just asked me if I knew that, right? But that's the thing, right? It's half of it's serendipity, getting the word out and letting people know what kind of opportunities are there, what kind of things you need so that people are always thinking about you and what you're looking for. Finally, I just think this is so easy, but so many people forget that one of the best ways to recruit people is through referrals. Okay, at Google we had a 40% referral rate, which most people were pretty happy with. The executives wished that the referral rate was above 90%. Why? Because they're the best hires. It's proven statistically that referrals tend to perform much higher than any other channel of hires. Okay, and it's easy to do. You get your company involved in providing a pipeline, in pushing people forward. The clock's flashing at me. Retention, okay, so you've worked your ass off and you've got all these people in there, right? It's not over, you have to keep them, right? And the great people are hard to keep. They really are, because they need to be challenged and stimulated and excited all the time. Look at this chart. So many people think it's about the money, but it's not. Look what the top of it is. It's about the culture, and that's why I stress this so hard. Everybody is sticking around, everybody's coming because of the culture that you've created. And the only way that you can make that so positive is to invest massive amounts of time and energy in it. You see, it's about the leadership. People leave for bad bosses, right? You're working for someone you don't like, you're trying to get out of there as fast as you can. Right? Career opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. Money's at the bottom. Money's important. People need to feel comfortable, but it's nothing compared to the rest of it. Let's go faster. You need to be meeting with your people. How many people in here do one-to-one -one meetings with their people or with your manager or whoever on a weekly basis? So less than a quarter of the crowd. Good for you. You need to do that, right? Everybody wants feedback. Everybody wants to know how they're doing, what you think of what they're doing, what they should be doing next, or get ideas, or have a discussion. Everybody wants this. This is the simplest thing you could do to help your people. The simplest thing. Put 30 minutes a week on your calendar for your people to do one-to-ones. It's easy, and you can do it. This is my favorite slide of all time, and I will from now on present this slide in any talk I do. It's, so they're howler monkeys, and there is a reason why I chose these monkeys, besides the fact that they just look cool. Um, communication, okay? I find it absolutely mind-boggling 
to walk into a company and ask five, six, ten, twelve people the same question. Things like, where do you think your company is headed? What's the direction? What's the vision? What do you think of your management, et cetera, et cetera? Nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, the answers are all different. Isn't that weird? Isn't that bizarre that people can have nine different ideas of where the company's going? If you're running that company, you're probably not happy with me telling you that, okay? And why is that? Because you don't communicate enough. You don't communicate enough at all. Right? So think to yourselves, when's the last time we've had an all-company meeting? And if you're telling me it's been three months, six months, 12 months, it's way too far. When's the last time you've updated people by email, verbally? The best companies at this, the companies that are really aligned, they're repeating the messaging around where they're going and the culture and the values permanently over and over and over again until you feel almost as if you're being beaten over the head with it. But that's how it works. Think of all the information overload you have, right? People don't pay attention today. People don't absorb information. So if you want people to know where you want to go with your company, you have to communicate, communicate, communicate. I like this slide too, Dr. Seuss. Learning. This has been, I think, one of the biggest changes in the past let's say, 15 years, that expectations today about people joining companies have changed in the sense that you must offer an environment where people can constantly learn. You must figure out ways to offer that within your company or people won't stay. I think it's one of the number one things of what the millennial generation desires when choosing a company. What kind of learning opportunities will I have? So it's very, very important to think about how you can offer that, and there's lots of things that you can do, even as very, very small companies, to put things into place where people have the chance to learn, to expand, to grow. It will challenge them. It will make them better contributors. It will bring more value to your company. I've gone over. This is my last slide, and this is what I want you to take away with you. If you get the culture right, everything else will follow. I think it's simple enough. Thanks very much.